Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast number 1826, the topic is training and the title is Back Growth Made Easy. We actually did a podcast similar to this back in podcast 1814. It was a training podcast titled Hamstring Growth Made Easy. I got good feedback on that. Somebody asked for another uh, area of focus and they asked for back. So I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. (laughs) So to give you a little background on this, one of my business clients, uh, we were doing our weekly virtual consultation. She's a personal trainer. She's running a business, uh, crushing it, but it's also learning. She's learning how to not let it crush her. (laughs) So she's been training about 40 hours a week and super busy with clients. She wants to continue to make progress. She actually trains for muscle growth. She wants to be lean and and muscular. She wants to look the part, quote unquote. Uh, She does want to be strong and things like that, but she's mostly looking for aesthetics right now to draw in more clients and to look good on social media. So uh, she said the following, I really want a super easy template for muscle growth. Like just do this, this, and this, and you're good. I love making workouts for my clients, but for my training, I'd like it to be more on the simpler side, but I like the idea of a template so I can still learn to plug in my own exercises or new things I see on social media. So what we did was we broke down the individual body parts that she wants to focus on. Now we made a frequency, uh, kind of schedule based on her needs, but I wanted to show you, uh, or share with you the breakdowns that we made. So we did the hamstring one in podcast 1814. So now we're coming back and catching the back. Now, the first thing about muscle growth is your nutrition has to support that. So we work together schedule wise to make sure that she has enough protein coming in and uh, pretty evenly spaced throughout the day. And then also make sure that she's eating enough calories for how much freaking activity she's doing. So she's training five days a week, sometimes four, but mostly five. And she's also on her feet training a lot of clients. So she needs a lot of calories. So she's eating a a ridiculous amount of food, but she's doing well with it. (laughs) And we have the calories in place. We have the protein in place and her timing is very well uh, kind of spread out throughout the day. So that is by far, you have to have that in place. Nothing you will do training wise makes a damn bit of difference if your nutrition doesn't support it. So I'm going to say that first because it's the most important thing. People are going to look past it, but please don't. (laughs) Uh, Otherwise, nothing I say in the rest of the uh, podcast will actually work for you if you're not eating enough protein to actually grow. So you want to make sure you have enough protein and that it's coming at the right time. To learn uh, the proper amount of calories and protein and timing for you, you can go to our website, www.brutalirongym.com. There's a page, Free Nutrition Education. Click on that. The first document on that page is Create Your Own Nutrition Program. You can actually figure out the right calories, protein, and timing specifically for you. So you don't have to pay anybody. Uh, you just go figure it out for free. Now, if you want to pay me, I can help you figure it out like I did with her. Pick the right foods. Look at her schedule. See what she needs. Figure out the right foods, the right timing, break it all down, and help with accountability and help with answering questions. That's the fun of what I get to do with people. I love that part of it. But if you want the free information, it is there on our website. Now, back template. Uh, What we're going to do is we looked at first exercise selection. The order I'm going to present this in doesn't have to be the order that you do it in, but it's a good place to start. The first exercise that we choose is something that targets the rear delts. Delts is short for deltoid. Deltoid is a fancy term for your shoulder muscles. So we want to include the rear shoulders, like the back edge of the shoulders, as part of our back training because, and this is especially true in females, the back side of your shoulder will contribute to the visual width of your back. The reason why it's a little more important for women than men is men usually, and this is stereotypical, so I am definitely going to have this wrong for some people, but men typically and usually want their lats to be very wide, whereas women want to have enough lats that it looks appropriate, but they want more of a V taper, so they're not as interested in growing their lat width. So if you're looking for back width visually, the shoulders are going to provide that width for females since the lats aren't going to be large. Uh, Now for men, we're going to try to blow out their lats. Usually, I know this is stereotypical language, so I apologize if anybody feels left out, but uh, typically if somebody wants really wide lats, their shoulders, the backside of the shoulders aren't going to matter as much 
it's definitely still something to train. But you have the visual of the lat width that will help create overall back width as well. But for anyone who doesn't want their lats to be very large, then you really need to pay attention to your shoulders. Now, you could make a very good argument that the rear shoulders aren't as important for width as the middle shoulders, the middle deltoid, because the middle deltoid is technically what sticks out the most visually. However, the way in which we train our rear delts almost always grows the middle delts as like a secondary growth. So if you target the rear delts, you're going to get the mid delt anyhow. But if you target, like say, the front delt, you're not going to get the rear delt. So it is important to target the rear delt because you're going to get some mid delt development. That's going to give you the width you want if you aren't as interested in your lats being super wide. Even if your lats are super wide, you still want to have nice wide shoulders to go with that. So we start with rear delts. One of the other reasons why is typically rear delts are going to be something where people don't feel them very well. You're going to take time to build mind-muscle connection with that. And it's a good muscle that grows well from higher time under tension. If you go too heavy, too short of time under tension, your bigger, stronger muscles tend to take over, uh, the traps or the lats. So we typically want to stay with lighter weight loads, higher time under tension, and then that serves well as like a warm-up for the shoulders leading into the rest of the back workout. So we prioritize them because they are hard to find mentally. We want to do it when we have the most energy and the most focus. And then we also want to do them at the beginning because they help warm up and lead into the rest of the workout. So rear delts are going to be a great place to start. Then we choose a row exercise. Again, you can switch the order around, but for this client, I want them to do a row because we want to prioritize mid-back detail and depth more than lat width. So we want to go into a row as opposed to a pull-up or pull-down first when we have more energy and we're more fresh. So we, uh, you know, kind of rule of prioritization, what you want to grow most, you give the most attention the earliest in the workout when you have the most energy to give to it. So we do a row. Now, there are 40 billion types of rows, but we're just going to categorize it as a row. The third exercise we choose is a pull-up or pull-down. And then the fourth exercise we kind of leave open. I'd write anything extra. And this is where she can include anything she sees on social media, any new exercise she wants to try to practice to help her client with. Uh, so if you want bigger traps, you would add shrugs. If you want more lat width, you just add more lat isolative work. If you want more thickness, you add more mid-back work. So you can kind of personalize that final exercise depending on what you want to grow the most, depending on which season of life you're in or what you feel like focusing on for that uh, time period. So it's rear delts, row, pull up or pull down and then anything extra. Now the considerations we make when deciding exactly what exercises to do. The first consideration I listed for her was to make sure that she changes and kind of mixes up different positions. This could be different grips, different body angle, different pulling angle, etc. You know, so if we're looking at rows, we can do a machine row, we can do a cable row, we can do overhand, we can do neutral grip, uh, we can pull from directly in front of us, we can sit in front of a cable tower and pull from slightly overhead, creating a little bit of a different angle. Uh, there's a lot of positional changes you can make. Even dumbbells, you could do a one-arm dumbbell row uh, with a slight uh, elbow flare and overhand position. You can do it with a typical kind of like 45 degree upper arm angle and, and that angled grip that people typically do. You could do it strict neutral if you wanted. Uh, you could do them, uh, you know, seal rows. You could do both arms together. You can do that flat. You can do it slightly inclined. Uh, there's a million variations, even just free weight variations. You can do barbell bent over row versus a dumbbell bent over row versus a T-bar row. Those are all a little bit different as well. The idea is that when we change exercises, we make sure we get a variety of positions and grips uh, included. Now, you might say, well, how often should I change exercises? Uh, that's a great question. We have podcast 1468, which is titled, How Often Should I Change Exercises? It's such a great question. Made such a great title. <laughs> but that's podcast 1468 Q&A. How often should I change exercises? I like changing exercises every four weeks. Uh, what I've found, and this is a little bit of like um, like bro science from just being training people since I was you know 18 years old for money. I am about to turn 40, so I've been doing this for over 20 years, paid to do this. And then also, if you look at like 
the history of other people, a lot of conversations. What you find is the longer somebody stays with the program, especially if you're trying to make a uh, linear progression per week, you're trying to create some kind of challenge, you know, like maybe not every single week, but you want some kind of progressive stress load to what you're doing to push the body to continue to develop. So every week or every other week, you try to add five pounds. Every week or every other week, you try to add an extra rep. You try to add something that pushes the body to continue to develop. That's how a program kind of pushes adaptation of the body. Well, the longer you stay with something, the harder and harder it is to add five pounds, the harder and harder it is to add one rep. Typically, what happens is the longer somebody stays with an exercise, the more they have to forego perfect technique and use a little bit of body English, a little bit of momentum to try to get those little additions, and then you start running into joint injuries, muscle tightnesses, and then actual injuries. I like changing over every four weeks because you really avoid the majority of that. Uh, with all the clients I train over all the years, I have a very, very low, knock on wood, a uh, very, very, very low rate of anyone feeling injured or hurt and that's going to be because we change everything all the time and every time we change something I'm pinpointing to different therapies of anything that might be coming up <laughs> so it's 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 a way for us to stay ahead of any kind of stresses whether that's connective tissue or muscle tissue so when we pick a new exercise every four weeks different body positions she also wants to have considerations of bilateral versus unilateral you know, if you've been doing a lot of uh, bilateral, both arms at one time, rows, then maybe the third or fourth program, switch over to a unilateral, like one arm at a time. Same thing with uh, pull downs. Maybe you've been doing, you know, pull ups and pull downs multiple times over, then switch to a single arm pull down. That's a good variation to throw it in there. So we want to have awareness to mixing in bilateral and unilateral movements. Our rep ranges, we want to switch. I gave her two categories, and you can use this as well. We have high time under tension, which is time under tension is T-U-T, -T, so it's referred to as TUT. <laughs> so high TUT, high time under tension, of a set lasting 30 to 60 seconds. So however many reps you can do, you're just moving at a nice controlled pace. However many reps happens to happen <laughs> between 30 to 60 seconds, that's a high time under tension. We have a low time under tension of 15 to 30 seconds. I told her she could even dip down to 10 because I want her to get a little bit of heavy weight load on her tissues. Depending on how strong someone is, the stronger a person is relative to their body uh, size, they want to stay away from super low tut. If your goal, if your goal is growth, you're just going to run into more connective tissue stresses. So... If somebody's a little bit not on the stronger side yet, you can get you can dip down into really low time under tensions as a great way to kind of get that damage and stress that you're maybe not getting with higher time retention because it requires such light weight. But in general, we have high time under tension is 30 to 60 seconds, low time under tension is 15 to 30 seconds. Then I want her to switch back and forth. You know, if you always do your rows at high time under tension, throw in a low time under tension exercise every now and then, and vice versa. Then the fourth consideration we have is to add an intensity technique. So on the fourth week before she switches exercises out, I want her to add an intensity technique so she can push overload, but she can remain safe. And that's going to be rest, pause, drop sets, or compounding superset, which is where you just do two exercises for the back, back to back. So that is our basic template. She wants to choose a rear delt exercise, a row, a pull-up or pull-down, and then anything else that she wants to emphasize. So four exercises each time she trains her back. Then every four weeks, she changes up the positions per exercise. She might change from a bilateral to a unilateral. She might switch from high time under tension to low time under tension or vice versa. And then on the fourth week, she's going to add a rest pause or a drop set or a compounding superset to push that overload adaptation, but stay safe. That's it. That's simple. It, it literally is that simple. Uh, what makes you grow or not grow beyond this stuff is just whether your nutrition is correct and whether your technique and intensity are correct. But you don't need fancy anything else. This is literally all the stuff you need to build an amazing back. You just have to make sure your nutrition is on point, your exercise is performed correctly, and you're picking a weight load that stresses you, but it stays within the right muscles. It's not so damn heavy that you're using every other muscle <laughs> uh, to try to help. Okay. Um, just a real quick, I'll give you a couple examples of some workouts. Uh, one workout is a dumbbell seated bent over lateral raise, and that's for the rear delts, and we would do that high time under tension. 
Then we would go right into a dumbbell one arm row for very low time and attention, so that'd be really heavy. Then we switch over to pull ups, whether you can do them assisted or weighted or just body weight, but you would aim for a low time and attention. And then we'd finish with cable row with a wide overhand grip, and that's high time and attention. So I gave that to a client recently, they loved that back workout. So again, it was dumbbell seated bent over lateral raises, high time and attention, dumbbell one arm row for low time and attention, pull ups for a low time and attention, and then cable seated row with a wide overhand grip for high time and attention. Great. Then a recent workout that I just did was cable straight arm lat pull downs into face pulls. And that was my first exercise, uh, kind of doing one right into the other. Then I went to cable lat pull downs with a wide overhand grip. Then I went to cable seated rows with a narrow grip. And then I finished with some dumbbell shrug drop sets. And that's a great overall back developer. So that's how you put it together something for the rear delts, some type of row some type of pull up or pull down, and then add a fourth thing, whatever you want to focus on. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions or if you like this idea and you want to see some more templates, just let me know. I'm happy to share these things. I just don't want to share everything and then bore everyone to death if they're not that interested. <laughs> so hopefully this was a good one. If you want to hear another body part, just let me know. I'm always happy to help. Okay, if you want some coaching, if you want help with business to grow your business, or if you just want help with nutrition and training, we have our one-on-one services you can see online on our website, www.brutalirongym.com. We're also offering right now, I'm offering a free 15-minute virtual consultation if you want to work with me. Uh, because what I found is I was getting a lot of requests, and it's very blessed, very grateful. But sometimes people would try it for a month or two, and I would like wouldn't hear from them. And then I would find out like that they loved it, they really wanted it, but they felt bad because you know for one reason or another they weren't staying with things. And what I wanted to do with the virtual consultations was to say that I just I just want to see where a person's mind is when we start on this, is this something that they're doing on a whim or is this something they actually want to kind of really make a change in their life? Do they really want someone who's going to give the best of themselves to them, which is what I do. And I want to make sure I'm getting that return. (laughs) So I feel like every time I explain this, it makes me feel like a total jerk. I don't expect people to make this their number one priority in life, not in any way whatsoever. It's just, if we, you know, if we decide on a goal and you want to work on something, it's nice if you commit to the process and you know, like I had a lady recently, she was struggling with her nutrition and she told me that she had an old coach who used to harass her and uh, give her crap if she ate like the wrong foods. And that was part of her hesitation to, to do the nutrition part with me. And I told her, I was like, Hey, you know, you're totally fine. You don't need to eat any, like you don't have to eat fish. If you don't like fish. You don't have to stay away from carbs. If you like carbs, you don't have to eat a ton of carbs. If you don't like carbs, I was like, we can just eat what's comfortable for you, but let's eat a little bit better than what you're eating now. So we can get a little bit of results and then we'll just keep that going. So that's what I want. I just want people to get to know me. I want to get to know you. So that way we can kind of see where everybody's starting and there's no, uh, pre pre thoughts as to how this will go, I want to be able to explain it and see you face-to-face. So if you're interested in that, if you want to work with me, we do that free 15-minute consultation. You can sign up for that on the website. Okay, enough of me yip-yapping. Uh, thank you for listening. So if you have any questions, if you need anything, just let me know. My email is brutalironjim at gmail.com. If you like the podcast, please share the podcast. If you like the podcast, please consider donating to support the podcast, which you can do on the website. Also, if you like the information we share in the podcast, you can find more from us on our social media channels. You can find us and follow us on Instagram and YouTube under the name Brutal Iron Gym. As always, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening.